Within this video, we are going to learn how we, we can get Forex data. This video is going to be the last video of a series of videos on how to get live cryptocurrencies data and how to get market data through different ways. And also, like within this video, I want to thank you again a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We are already 317, which is totally insane. And I promise you, I'm, I'm going to give you even more and more content um, afterwards. But yeah, this video is like a, a video which is going to end this series of videos where we have learned how to get crypto and market data. And that's going to be the starting point of a series of videos on where I'm going to teach you how you can trade and how you can get live Forex signals using Python and algorithmic trading. Live Forex signals. Okay, this video is going to be divided in two parts. On the first part, I'm going to explain you how the Yahoo Finance API is working for Forex data, which is a little bit different than which is little bit different than market data, for instance, Amazon stock or yeah, for instance, Amazon stock or Tesla. That's gonna be a little bit different, or in order to get cryptocurrency data, for instance, that's again, for instance, if you want um btc usd that's again different and within this video i'm going to teach you how yahoo finance api is working for forex data because it's very very specific you you will understand and once we have seen how yahoo finance api is working for forex data we are going to learn how and we are going to start coding and the coding part is going to be divided in two parts the first part we're going to get the data and the second part that's going to be a small data visualization recap on how you can get live market data. I hope you're already. Let's go, guys. And let's start by understanding the Yahoo Finance API. Essentially, let's start by some quick line of code before to talk about Yahoo Finance API. We are going to start by importing our raw packages, which are NumPy and Pandas. Once you get your package, you're going to have to import the data source, which is going to be Yahoo Finance. Let's execute. And after that, we are going to talk about Yahoo Finance API and how does that work. If we take a look at it, let's type the first line of code. You, in order to get and to download market data, we are going to like insert it inside the variable that we are going to call data that we're going to call afterwards data. Sorry, oh, be careful about the capital letter data. Yeah, if you want your data, if you click shift tab, you can have like more information. The first argument that you have to insert is the ticker, which means like which ticker do you want? And that's going to be the specificity for the Forex, which ticker you should choose. So start and, and after it's going to be just not mandatory arguments. Either you can insert the start and end date, for instance, 3rd July 2020 or 18th January 2021. And um, otherwise, you can, me, what I'm using, I'm using the period. For instance, I'm going to use, let's say, a period of one day. If I want the Forex data for the latest day, and an interval of, yeah, if you look at the data, you will see that um, below the period, you have the interval. For instance, if I want an interval of five minutes. Okay. But yeah, the first argument that you have to insert is the ticker. If you remember well, when you want to import market data, the ticker going to be the ticker is going to be, for instance, uh, if you want the data for Tesla, you're just going to have to type Tesla and you get, you're going to get your data. You're going to have like the data for Tesla. If you want the BTC USD, for instance, if you want the Bitcoin, 
you have to type PTC USD execute. Oh, okay. I think it might be that. Yeah, I don't remember exactly the ticker, but yeah, for instance, if you want the Bitcoin data for one day with an interval of five minutes, you have just type BTC USD and you can get your data. Okay, I might have typed it by the wrong way. Let's take a look. For instance, if you type BTC USD cryptocurrencies, yeah, you have to type BTC USD and you're gonna get your cryptocurrencies data. Let's go back on our, yes, let's execute. Yeah, okay, BTC USD and you got your cryptocurrencies data. But by another case, if you want the pair, which is Euro USD for Forex data, you will get an error, no data found. And if you try this way, you will see that whatever you can do, you will never be able to get it. And that's one of the specificity of Yahoo Finance API. And if you are, I don't know if you are aware of, but Yahoo Finance API is directly correlated to their website, which is Yo Finance. And if you want, if you want your data, or your Forex data, for instance, let's say you want the data for the pair, which is USD DPY. You type USD DPY. Let's type up. Yeah. Let's take a, let's take a look. Okay, that means that if you want your USD GPY data, and as you can see, like the data are currently in live, it's like 9.22 p.m. in the UK, and the market is currently moving, like 105.379. And what we are going to do, we are going to use this ticker inside our Python line of code, and let's execute, and let's see. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, perfect. As you can see here, it's like 9.22 p.m. And if we look on Google, what time is it? What time is it? Yeah, it's 9.22 p.m. If you look at the data, we currently have like the GPY value at 9.22 and 33 seconds. As you can see, the data are super accurate. And if you look at the current price is like 105.373. And if we rerun this cell, 105.37, sorry, the close 378. Yeah, there was a very, very slight difference. And now, even now, if you look at it, it's like 379. As you can see, the market is currently moving. That's real time video. Okay. that's. Yeah, that's the first way of getting the ticker. Here is like, as you can see, for the DPY, that's quite straightforward. If you want the Euro USD data, for instance, Euro USD, or the USD Euro, for instance, you're gonna have to type Euro X. Let's try Euro X. As you can see, again, we got the data for the euro currency and now if you want the data for instance if you want the euro gbp uh, as you may be aware you can't type just euro euro um euro gbp you have to type euro gbp and or G let's say gbp euro it's going to be easier it's going to be another example and if you want to have like the right ticker you just have to copy and paste what is inside the parenthesis yeah don't remember just remember about this point never 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 copy and pass this ticker that's not the ticker which is going to be that you will have to use within your python script what you're going to have to use is going to be this ticker copy up let's remove and past yeah okay that's all good, 1.3960 at 9.24 and 49 seconds. That looks all good. Okay, if we go back on our whiteboard, if you remember, well, the first part was just was to talk about the Yahoo Finance API and how does that work. The key takeaway that you must never forget in order to get the Forex data, always take the ticker which is within the parenthesis if you have 
any any question just like type the ticker that you want that can be like tpy uh tpy uh dpy australian dollar for instance uh, just to click copy and paste the ticker but just as a takeaway just never forget to copy and paste the ticker okay uh yeah now uh that we got like our dbp euro currency let's say now if you want you can take like the dpy aud if you remember it was dpy aud equal x and let's execute okay and what we are going to do now we are going to plot this data we are going to plot um our data for dpy aud and i'm going to just make you like a quick refresh about data visualization and just remember about something if you don't want to type the code you just have to see to take a look at the resources below the video and you're gonna you're gonna have the jupyter notebook associated to this video okay data visu visualization we're gonna start by importing plotly yeah um after that we will have to declare our figure starting by declaring our figure yeah typing go that figure like if you remember well three step declare the figure then you put within the figure your truss and for this specific graph we are going to use as a truss we are going to use um a candlestick because i believe that's more helpful and it's going to be more helpful for us when you're going to start implementing algorithmic trading for forex in order to get signals i believe I, you will understand um in the next videos why that's so important why is that so important to get candlestick because from like from my vision that's very important to see like the variation within uh within the same period of time but okay which means like for the candlestick if you remember well you can just copy and paste what we have seen in the other videos and again you have the jupyter notebook just below the video okay after that we are going to add the title yeah up i'm just going to pick up the structure that i already prepared the title gonna be uh, i think that dpy japanese yen against australian dollar australian Australian dollar. Okay, we have the title. Uh, we can even like specify yeah the x axis, but like doesn't matter. Let's just close that and let's show the graph. So only thing that you have to type is fig dot show, and let's execute. yeah and as you can see here like we have like the period which is divided each five minutes and per period of five minutes we have like how the dpy australian dollar have evolved within the day at the beginning of the day at so uh, we don't have like the yeah okay perfect at 12 o'clock um it was it opened at 0 0.12455 and um at 3 a.m this night it reached 0 0.12487 and at the moment where i'm talking to you right now at 9:24 and 49 seconds pm in the uk because i'm currently living and working in london it's actually at 0 0.12362 okay guys um that's all for this first video which is gonna be that's the last one of the series on how to get data using yo finance api but that's gonna be the first one of a series of videos and i hope to read the next videos on sunday where i'm going to show you how you can trade in life the forex and how you can get forex signals using ishimoku kinkoyo yeah as you may be aware i'm currently working full time which is like yeah i'm currently working full time which is like for me a little bit challenging to release more videos 
but uh, yeah uh, just be patient and on Sunday uh, I I target to release a new videos on how to get how to get forex signals using algorithmic trading and Python okay guys I hope you enjoyed this first introduction about how to get forex data and the specificities these videos have been highly asked to me on uh, by people on LinkedIn and on Twitter just feel free to contact me on LinkedIn and Twitter and um, and if you have any questions just let me know or let me know within the comments and I will always 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 do my best to uh, to give you the best of the best um, for the next videos I'm planning also to create like a part on the back testing as well which I believe uh, can be very very interesting for you okay guys I really hope you enjoy this video you can go on my LinkedIn and yeah if you are working in London as well uh, in finance you can just like pop up and we can have a chat and uh, yeah feel free to text me I'm very open um, I'm very um, and I was al always like good surprise when I'm talking with you guys I really hope you enjoy this video I really really hope you enjoy this video and again thank you very much like 317 followers which is totally insane and um, I really hope you enjoy it I'm giving all my love <laughs> within these videos and I'm very very happy that so much people are following me right now that just make me super grateful about life and uh, I really want to give you the best and I'm going to give you even more content in the next, in the next days see you guys and yeah really hope you enjoy this video and see you guys bye